Go. Hello and welcome to Kabbalah of Adam. Um, before we start, we would like to dedicate this class in the, for the merit and the memory of Michael McNeil. This is Brandon's father who passed away. He's not in class today. Uh, I can't remember the last 20 years when Brandon's missed class. Yeah. Um, and so <clears throat> um, uh, the Torah for his merit and his ascension to the throne of heaven under the wings of the Shekhinah. And uh, the, the man has to have merit because he had a righteous son that sought out Torah and Hashem. Absolutely. So there is merit to be said. So we would like to dedicate this class for him and the Torah for him. Uh, it's a very powerful thing uh, to do that. Um, also, today we are going to pick up where we left off with the teraphim and all that. We're talking about the other religions, basically, other than Judaism. And um, all the idols are considered teraphim. And I'm going to get into explaining why they are. And that's going to lead us right into Gog and Magog. And you're going to learn what's going to happen there. So um, I like to look at this as the real news. You know, <laughs> <clears throat> um, if, if you look, we'll take a break and look at the natural for a second. If, if you look at what's going on in, in, in the world, and um, we do quite a bit of study in Kol Hator, the Golan Vilna, um, everything that's in there is, you, you see it in the natural if you know what you're looking for. And I have to say that um, there's a lot of stuff out there. I, I watch all the back channel stuff like most great conspiracy theorists or truth seekers do. Um, because I like to um, see the playbook of the back side. And once you know the playbook of the front side, and once you know the playbook of the back side, you can pretty well see what's going on. And then when I teach the class, I can give you examples of how it appears in the natural. And it, and it ties in really well. But everything that has happened to this country over the last 100 years, or since 1913, for sure, um, with the formation of the Federal Reserve Act and all the wars that we've gone to, through, and everything that we that has happened globally, economically, politically, racially, everything that this country's gone through is, and, and around the world, is going to be blamed on the Jews. You can count on it. And... They always say we're going to leave Israel for last, Israel for last, because that is their plan and that's Hashem's plan. And what we're going to get into today is what happens when they do that. Mm. Okay? It's going, to, it's going to be an eye opener. So without further ado, let's get into our prayer. I've got some good Talmud today for you. We're going to roll into Bilaam. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about all that kind of stuff. So it's going to be very informative. Get ready for some brain melt, information overload, or like I like to call information download. <laughs> Rule of the universe and master of all masters, father of mercy and forgiveness, we thank you, our God and the God of our fathers, by bowing down and kneeling, that you brought us closer to your Torah and your holy work, and that you enable us to take part in the secrets of your holy Torah. How worthy are we that you grant us with such a big favor? That is the reason we plead before you, that you will forgive and acquit all of our sins, and they should not bring separation between you and us. And may it be your will before you, our God and the God of our fathers, that you will awaken and prepare our hearts to love and revere you. May you listen to our utterances and open our closed heart to the hidden studies of your Torah. And may our study be pleasant before your place of honor, as aroma of sweet incense. And may you emanate to us light from the source of our soul to all of our being. And may the sparks of your holy servants, through which you revealed your wisdom to the world, shine. May their merit and the merit of their fathers and the merit of their Torah and holiness support us so we shall not stumble through our study. And by their merit, enlighten our eyes in our learning as stated by King David, the sweet singer of Israel, open my eyes so that I will see wonders from your Torah. 
Because from his mouth, God gives wisdom and understanding. May the utterance of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart find favor for you, God, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. All right. We're going to start back with verse two, because I only gave you a few sentences in, in chapter 2, 10. And uh, chapter 10, verse two in Zechariah. So we're going to start with the raw volley there. If you want to know about the whole teraphim and all that stuff. Last class was I think class what fifty two. It's at the it's at the end of that it's at the end of that last class. Class fifty two means we've been on Zechariah for a year. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and we're at uh, chapter ten. So I am going to read two, three, and four which is what we will cover today. We usually cover about three verses in an hour, so that's what we're going to do again today. <clears throat> I'm going to read the Peshat, then we're going to get into Rabali, and we're going to look at the secret of the matter, the Sod, and we're going to jump off and do a little Rashi and Talmud. So here we go. Zechariah, if you have a Tanakh, I'm on page uh, 1419, uh, chapter 10, verse 2. For the teraphim speaks words of nothingness, and the the vinners or the uh, I guess that's the easiest way to they uh, see falsehoods. The dreamers speak lies. They comfort with meaningless words. Therefore, they have wandered off like sheep. They are humbled, for there is no shepherd. My anger is kindled against the shepherds. I will punish. Now, when we get into it, this word punish means visit, it means deal with, and it means remember. He will remember it. So that, that word in Hebrew has several different meanings. And punish. The he goats. So, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of goat stuff out there these days. If you know, if you are into uh Watching the TV, you know, in Hollywood, they're all into the pentagram and the goats and all this good stuff, right? For the uh, satanic cabal. For Hashem, master of legions, have remembered his flock and the house of Judah. He will make them like a horse whose glory is in war. From themselves, the cornerstone. From themselves, the peg. From themselves, the bow of war. From themselves, all the leaders will come forth together. We, that is Gog and Magog. Now, Gog and Magog is Gematria 70, which is going to be the 70 nations that all come together, all the nations in the world will come together to fight against Israel. And this is a big mistake. But it will happen. It will happen. We see it. So here's what Rob Bali says in verse two, for the teraphim speak words of nothingness, the vinner see falsehoods, and the dreamers speak lies, they comfort with meaningless words. Now, if you've ever been into a church, people will always come up to you and say, hey, I have a word for you, right? <laughs> God told me to tell you, right? Um, and it's never anything bad. It's al always something good. Oh, bless you. Oh, bless you. You know, right? <laughs> because they speak of comforting words. Because they think that's what they're supposed to do. Why? Because it makes them feel good. And they think they're making you feel good. All right? Why do people go on Thanksgiving and Christmas and Easter and all these places and they go serve soup at the food kitchen? Because their religion is driven off emotion and not facts. It makes, they think they're doing a good deed, but it makes them feel good. It's a self, it's a self motivation. All right. And so, well, the Holy Spirit told me or the Holy Spirit, I've got the Holy Spirit. All right. The nations are not holy. Therefore, they can't have anything holy. It's in the word holy. The first sign of the Holy Spirit is you are able to resurrect the dead. All the sages in the, in the Tanakh could do it. 
It's it. I mean, in the Talmud, it's in there. It's all the stories where they did it. When 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 Rebbe used to when Rebbe Yehuda Hanasi would go study Torah with Antoninus, right? Antoninus couldn't be seen going there, and he couldn't be seen going there. They had to do it in, in covert. So the angels would kill the guards, spoken by the words of Yehuda Hanasi, come in, or vice versa. You know, it, it, well, it, uh, you, Judah the prince would go see Antoninus. He, the guards were standing outside to not let anybody in with it. They would die, you know, and they would go. He would study Torah, and when they left, he would resurrect them. Like nothing ever, they just like nothing ever happened. This happened all the time. So that's what Ruach Hakodesh means. One, it's called Ruach, not Nefeshach, right? <laughs> it's not the Nefesh, it's the Ruach, all right? There is no non Jew that has the Ruach that is not in Torah. It clearly says that once all once the once the Sitra Akra is rem, is being thought of and is removed from Israel in Joel chapter three, then they the sons and daughters will prophesy Navua, prophecy will return. The problem with this whole matter is, as it says in Talmud, with the destruction of the second temple. Now, I am in Sota. If you have Sota, I have your Sota, by the way, Russell. Mm -hmm. This is book 33B. These are the things that happened with the destruction of, and the death of these, the destruction of the second temple and the death of these men. Now, when the temple was destroyed, the Shekhinah no longer had a home. So she's in exile. Well, guess what? So is the Ruach HaKodesh. Mm -hmm. So say, well, I hear God speaking to me. No, you don't hear God speaking to you. You hear the good inclination speaking to you versus the evil inclination. The Yetzer Hurrah versus the Yetzer Tov. Right? Mm -hmm. That is an aspect of divinity and an aspect of the other side. Mm -hmm. And it's what gives you free choice. Don't murder him. Murder him. Don't murder him. Murder him. You're, you're, you're having a conversation with yourself and you hope the good inclination of yourself takes over. God's not talking to you directly. He is going to talk to his children first, his priests first, his Mashiach first. The whole thing first. The Jews are first. Mm -hmm. All right? So here's what it says. I'm on 49A4. The qualities that vanished during their various times. Once Rebbe Mayer died, there ceased to be composers of parables. Once Ben Azza died, there ceased to be diligent scholars. Once Ben Zoma died, there ceased to be experts and experts in exegesis. Once Rabbi Akiva died, the glory of Torah ceased. So the Torah that you're hearing tonight, it's it is so minute compared to what these guys taught on a daily basis or talked about. Once Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa died, there ceased to be people of deeds. Once Rav Yossi uh, Katana died, the lesser, you can hear the word cotton in the name, there ceased to be pious men. There's nobody pious anymore since that day. And why is he called Katana? Because he was the least of the pious men of the day. <laughs> Once Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai died, the splendor of wisdom ceased. Once Rab Ramban Gamiel the elder died, the glory of Torah ceased, and the purity did, as well as abstinence. Once Rabbi Yishmael ben, ben Pavi died, the splendor of the kahuna sense ceased. Once Rebbe Yehuda Hanasi died, humility ceased as well as the dread of sin. So if the dread is, of sin is gone, you're not getting Ruach HaKodesh. Sorry. Mm -hmm. 
the more concerning the decline that occurred with the destruction of the temples, our rabbis taught. Rabbi Pincus ben Yair says, from the time the temple was destroyed, Havarim and high-born men have been ashamed and their heads have been covered and, and men of merit have been impoverished. Strong-armed men and slanders have triumphed and there is none who seeks, none who searches, and none who inquires upon whom can we learn, upon whom can we lie, rely upon, upon our Father in heaven. Additional, Rabbi Eliezer the Great says, from the day the temple was destroyed, listen to this, scholars became like school teachers, and school teachers like synagogue attendants, and synagogue attendants like unlearned commoners. And that was 2,000 years ago. So we're, how low have we gotten today? I'll tell you how low we've gotten. We've gotten so low that all they want to do is teach non-Jews seven laws. That's how bad it's gotten. That's how bad it's gotten. It's gotten so bad, the non-Jews are told not to stay the Torah. Mm -hmm. The righteous non-Jews. I'm not talking about the Akum. That is, that is where we... That's, and that just tells you why. So, so now, now we're going to take that knowledge and we're going to get in here in chapter 2 with Rob Bali. And behold, through this revelation of his divine province, blessed is he, of his people and his possession and inheritance, all the nations will recognize and know that there was nothing in their deities, nothing in their gods. And this is the matter that's said in support in verse 2. And the secret of the matter is the teraphim is the secret of the nukva of impurity, the female of the backside, the, the mahut. And they are called so i.e. teraphim, because they place or put their power of speech in them. That's the whole God told me to tell you that. They can talk. From the place of weakness, i.e. the Achilles heel, the vulnerability point, of the evil nukva from the impure and contaminated seed that is called a ving, nothingness, in the verse. For the teraphim speak words of nothingness. They're not hearing from God. They're just telling you what they want to tell you. Bless you. That is drawn down to her, the impure nukva, from the male, Samael. And this is the secret of verse 2. The teraphim speak words of nothingness, avin, avin. And this is the reason that those who consult or ask the teraphim were occupied with all kinds of abominations, detestable practices, in order to draw down impurity through impurity. Now, I'm not saying that that statue of Jesus or that statue of Mary ain't talking to you. I'm telling you, God ain't talking to you. Of Israel. Okay? Let's get something clear. You may be getting the word, but it's from the backside. Mm. It's from Samael and Lil. Mm. And so we find with the wicked Balaam, as our rabbis of blessed memory have said, that he used to perform marital acts at night with his donkey. Sanhedrin. This is book number 49. Sanhedrin 105b. He is, Balaam was, Balaam, Balaam, Balaam was one of Pharaoh's advisors. His two other advisors were Jethro and Job. Right? Those are the three klepas of the three worlds. Asiyah, Yitzhira, Berea. 
Joe, uh, Bilaam, Job, Jethro. Jethro is the neshama of that. That's why, that's why Job, Job was the scapegoat for the children of Israel. If you want to know about Job, that's, that's a whole different subject. But Job is, uh, Job is the consummate gear. He was once on that side, and now he's on this side. The Gomorrah explains, 105B1. The Gomorrah explains, what do we mean when we... Uh, when we say that he did not know what was on the, the mind of his animal, it's it, it's like this. <clears throat> Don't tell me you hear from God if you can't tell me what your dog's thinking. If you, you don't even know what's on the mind of your animal, how then can you know what's on the mind of Hashem? Okay, that's the topic here. And the Gemara is saying, you don't even know what you don't even know what your donkey's thinking. What do we mean when we say that he did not know what was on the mind of his animal? For the Moabite emissary said to Balaam, Why do you not ride a horse? He said to them, I usually ride a horse. However, today I'm riding a donkey because I put my horse in the marshland to graze. Thereupon, the she-donkey said to Balaam in front of the Moabites, Am I your she-donkey merely for carrying burdens? Balaam said, trying to cut her off before she could contradict him any further. That you have ridden on? Now you understand the word riding the donkey is clean language for having sex with the donkey. Mm. So the backside Mashiach rides a donkey <laughs> that you have ridden on. The donkey continued, contradicting Billam's contention that she was merely a beast of burden. In other words, the donkey saying, I'm not just a donkey, I'm his she donkey. Only occasional, Billam said. It's only occasional, implying that ordinarily he did not write her. And the donkey says, all your life unto this day. Every day, Billam. <laughs> the donkey went on contradicting Billam's contention that he had never ridden her except on rare occasions. Not only that, she continued, but at night I perform marital acts with you. This is deduced as follows. It is written here that the donkey said, I have been accustomed to do such a thing to you. And it is written elsewhere, let her be for him a warmer. To this retort, the donkey, uh, of, to this retort of, of the donkey, Billam was unable to make a reply. Thus, the donkey got the best of Billam in their verbal sparring. How then could Bilaam claim to know the mind of the Supreme One? That is, to know and manipulate the mind of God to allow him to curse the Jews. When it was evident that he was unable to manipulate even the mind of his animal. Rather, what is the meaning of Bilaam's description of himself? One who knows the mind of the Supreme One. So we use that, we use that story as a proof text in this whole thing, because we've heard it all our lives, have we not? Mm -hmm. And there is no awakening or arousal of the power of the co-op of the impurity except through impurity. So if you're on the impure side, you're only arousing the impure citra that's quote unquote speaking to you. Just as the holiness, Kedusha, is not awakened except through Kedusha. Because it is revealed and happens according to its kind. God created these animals according to its kind. This animal according, birds according to their kind. Fish according to its kind. So you are going, you are only going to receive according to your kind. If you're on... 
the front side, you're only going to receive according to the front side. If you're on the back side, you're only going to receive according to the back side. <clears throat> it's only going to receive and, and it's happening according to its kind and it's awakened. And the diviners, the diviners, draw down their power of divination from the side of the male of the impurity and the secret of the king of the evil side. Does the evil, does, is, do other religions have, have a king? Yeah. And on this secret, it is written, Proverbs 16.10, page 1591. So turn with me to Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs 16, rather. Chapter 10. Proverbs 16, verse 10. There is a charm. That word there is divination. Same word as divination. There's charm on the lips of a king. And just just the aspect of the speech or speaking is from the side of the nukva. It's a who or your mouth. Therefore, the aspect of seeing visions. Oh, I had a dream last night. Let me tell you what God told me to tell you. Mm -hmm. I had a seeing or a vision. It's from the side of the male. And this is the secret of verse 2. And the diviners see falsehoods visions. They are sheker, which means lies. And behold, the nations will know and recognize to reject them. That their teraphim and their diviners, we call them TV preachers, <laughs> were all falsehoods and lies. And there's a midrash, and I, I tried to find it, I just couldn't find it, that says when all this happens, every idol in every building, anywhere it's at, whether it's, you know, the little gnomes you had for Christmas, find the gnome, or what, what, what's those things called? Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. To the statues of Mary, to the statues, of the statues of Jesus on the wall in all the churches, every one of them will speak with its mouth because that's what teraphim do. And they will confess to the world that they are nothing but an idol. And everyone will see it and everyone will hear it in their own homes. If you have one in your home, it will talk to you. Because that's what's, that's one of the signs of Mashiach. And behold, the nations will know and recognize to reject them that they're to reject the teraphims, right? <clears throat> that their teraphims and their diviners were all falsehoods and lies. And also the dreamers that dreamed. And they, the people, were comforted through their sorrows and troubles. They will recognize and know that it was all falsehoods and nothingness and speaking of lies and vanity. What does Solomon say? It's all vanity. Vanities upon vanities, it's all vanities, right? And so this is this is where it's headed. This is this will be this is headed right at Gog and Magog. And I'm telling y'all right now, we are within the number of years I've got on my hands at the precipice. <clears throat> And there was no advantage or usefulness in them. As it says in verse 2, the dreamers speak lies and comfort with meaningless words. And behold, that the revelation of his divinity, Hashem's divinity, may he be blessed, will nullify all of their divinities. The divinities of the nations. That's why you don't have the Holy Spirit. Because 
Nothing in the nations is holy to begin with. There can be some righteousness. That's a whole different thing. And they will be compelled to abandon their errors and to go and depart from them in order to adhere to the God of truth. Amen. The God of truth. And this is the secret in verse 2. They have wandered off far like sheep. That they have wandered from one pasture to another and another pasture to another that they thought was better than it. The lower you go, the more there is waste. The more waste there is, the greener the grass. My dad told me when I was a little kid, I'll never forget it. He said, let me tell you something about my dad's a rancher. Let me tell you something, son, about the grass on the other side of the fence. The greenest grass we got on this whole place is on top of our septic tank. You know, <laughs> back when you have lateral lines out there, <laughs> right? And and that 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 goes too for, you know, he was, he was trying to tell me this in a, uh, with women, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, but he, and he was using that metaphor, but it stands true. So, ah, we don't like this church. We're going to go to this church. Oh, the grass is greener over there, right? When you come out of the church, you realize there ain't no grass, <laughs> right? It's the, the whole, it, it's a desolate, desolate desert. Mm -hmm. On page, I was fixing to jump on he goes, <laughs> and certainly all the more so that the revelation of the kedusha holiness immediately nullifies and removes the spirit of impurity from the earth. Has this happened yet? No. It removes the spirit of impurity from the earth that the shepherd, the leader, was bringing forth and fetching of all the nations, and that. And this is the matter that they said in conclusion. They are humbled for there is no shepherd. That they have traveled and wandered from the Citra Opera because they no longer have a shepherd from that side, from the side of the Citra Opera. As everything would be nullified before, before them, literally in front of Kedusha. So all of, the, all of Israel is going to watch this in real time happen to the nations. All their idols are going to speak. They're going to, they're going to be like wandering sheep. They're going to realize they've been worshiping the Citra Opera the whole time, which is Jeremiah chapter 12. We looked on him who was pierced, because that's the slaughter of the Citra Opera. When Hashem slaughters the Citra Opera, it's in... Sukkot 52. And they will wonder, how are we not over able, to, able to overcome this? And those who overcame it will see it as such a huge mountain of how did we overcome it? And those who couldn't overcome it will see it as just a small strand of hair and say, how did we not be able to overcome this? It's talent. And everything will be nullified in front of the Kedusha. And they, were, and they were restrained. And on this, the secret is written in support. For the teraphim speak words of nothingness. The diviners, 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 divination, see falsehoods. The dreamers speak lies. They comfort with meaningless words. Therefore, they have wandered off like sheep. They are humbled, for there is no shepherd. Verse 3, my anger has kindled uh, against the shepherds and I will punish the he goats. For Hashem, master of legions, has remembered his flock, the house of Judah, and he will make them like a horse whose glory is in war. Let me look here in the tray of songs, see if there's anything that I want to tell you. Rashi, this is from Rashi. At that 
time, at that future time, the people will realize that those who misled their forefathers will be encouraged to rebel against God, speak words of nothing as falsehood and lies by predicting a peace that did not come, says Rashi, and declaring that the destruction of the temple would never take place, Roddick. They will see that only the prophecies of the true prophets have been realized. All these TV prophets won't, won't none of it happen. Some commentaries understand this literally and explains that the teraphim were the images made by astrologers, which at certain times had the power of speech, Ebenezer. Ezra. However, uh, Metz, Metzudos writes, however, that they had human form, but were not made to speak through sor but were made to speak through sorcery. Although in Genesis 3130, it would appear that the teraphim were also idols. The Rambam writes, the, uh, the Ramban writes, that they were not necessarily worshipped as idols, but were oracles used to magically foretell the future. The word teraphim is derived from the root repha, which means weak, and alludes to the weakness of their prognostications. The diviners will see falsehoods, although generally translated diviners is one who consults a stick or asks, shall I go here or shall I go there? Um, um, they are card readers and uh, tarot card readers and uh, what are those people that they go see? The fortune tellers, right? Mm -hmm. Well, tell me my fortune. Stargazers. As it used to happen, they would always consult these people before they went into war with the Jews. Now God's man. In verse 3. The shepherds. As below, so above. We had shepherds in the last uh, verse 2. Now we have shepherds in this one. The shepherds. They are the angels the sars of the nations, that the Holy One, blessed be he, is angry with them because they comforted and calmed the nations themselves, that they should make divinities and accept their service. Although there is, there is destroying or wiping out through them, and they were not destroyed or wiped out. As verse 3 says, and the he-goats. The he-goats are the kings below in the secret of Isaiah 24, 21, page 993. So turn with me to Isaiah 24. Isaiah 24. What did I say? 21. Now, uh, remember I talked about the word punish or deal with or remember. Verse 21, it shall be on that day that Hashem will deal with. That's the same word as punish. The host of heaven in heaven and with the kings of the earth on the earth. It's telling us the above and below. Um, if you want to read later at your leisure, this uh, the, the, the place here, um, starting at 17, the fear of pitfalls and snare will be upon you on the of the land. It, it, it's, a, it's a really, it, this whole thing is about desolation of the land. And what you have to understand is, is everything the nations have done to Israel over 6,000 years is going to come back to the nations in one day. And we're going to get to that one day. And I'm going to tell you what that one day is. I can't tell you when that one day is, but I can tell you on what day it will happen. How about that? And behold, it is already known that there is a dealing with, a remembering, a visiting 
for the good. And there is a dealing with and a visiting and a remembering for the evil, for the bad. And here, the is this one to that one, as it says in verse 3. I will deal with the he-goats for the bad, the evil. For Shem, Master of Legions, has remembered his flock. He's going to deal with his flock. So we see in one verse, he's going to deal with the he-goats, which is the backside, and he's going to deal with his flock, the good. He's, this is going to be remembered for good, and this is going to be remembered for evil at the same time. Hasidim and Guru. <clears throat> That remit that and his his flock, his house, Judah, of Judah. That is remembering or dealing with or visiting for the good. And the matter of remembering is from him, may he be blessed, which is either for evil or for good. Take it all the way back to the garden, the Etzadot Torah, mm -hmm. right? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You're either going to cling to the evil or cling to the good. The thoughts in your head, where did it bifurcate? At the ot, which is the at the dot tovara, the tree of the knowledge. Mm -hmm. So if, if if it's dealing with air, then you're going to deal with your own knowledge of dealing with the yetzer hatov and the yetzer hara. Mm -hmm. It's all mechanics. And behold, it is always on the day of remembrance. What is the day of remembrance? That he remembers. Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> the head of the year. Is when he remembers. The head of the year. As on it, the deeds of the world are remembered and recalled. We do it every year. Now, remember a couple classes back, we said there were certain things that were going to happen. It's going to be bump, bump, the, the signs. Mm -hmm. One of them was sound of the shofar, right? Mm -hmm. What day is that blown on? Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah. So if you want to know when it's all going to go down, it's all, all these things are going to hit on Rosh Hashanah. Maybe not this year, but maybe. Mm -hmm. But God does everything on a time schedule, on a on his clock, right? Mm -hmm. And so it, all of this will happen on Rosh Hashanah, all this stuff. Because what happens on Yom Kippur? Everything is judged. And on all the previous inclinations are recalled and remembered because everything will be done on one day. That on it, the nations will be remembered and dealt with for evil, and Israel will be remembered and dealt with for good. That is called his flock because the directing of them was by his hand. As it says in Deuteronomy 32, 9, page 507. Turn with me to 507. 507. 32, 9. For Hashem's portion is his people, and Jacob is the measurement of his inheritance. The portion of Hashem is his people. That which is not so is the directing of the nations. That is by the hand of their sarim, their ministering angels. As it says in, 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 the, in the sentence, in verse 3 it says, and he will make them like a horse whose glory, now that word there is hode, hode, that you can say splendor, you can say glory. He will make them like a war horse, basically, who's, who's in battle, you know, with all the battle armor. A horse whose glory is in war. So turn with me to Ezekiel 25, 14. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. Ezekiel 25, 14, page 1267. 
Now, for those of you who do not know, Edom is Rome. Edom is Christianity. And instead of reading, 14 is what Rabali says that is our source for this piece. This is who, this is going to be the strongest nation of the land. It's none other than America and Europe. They're the two strongest nations. Look at verse 12. Thus says the Lord Hashem el because Edom acted in wreaking vengeance against the house of Judah and has incurred guilt by taking vengeance against them. Therefore, thus says the Lord Hashem el I will extend my hand against Edom and eliminate from it man and animal. And I will make it desolate from the south and the inhabitants of Dedan will fall by the sword. Now there is a place in Israel where Edom did live, but this is, we're talking here on a, on a much bigger level. 14, this is our piece. Then I will place my vengeance my, my, my anger, my punishment, my visiting in Edom by the hand of my people Israel. And they will deal with Edom in accordance with my anger and my wrath. Then they will know my vengeance, the, the word of the Lord Hashem Elohim. So I'm telling you, it's coming. It's coming. And I told you what day it's coming on. I just don't know what year it's coming on. <laughs> but if I had to take a shot in the dark, 2030. <laughs> and I'd be a pretty good shot for it. That's a good shot. I'd be a pretty good shot. That here, Rob says, he will says, he will make Israel, he will make them a Merkava. Chariot, divine chariot, a divine horse, horse and chariot to his great name. And he will draw down power and co op to them from the holy left side to fight with his guru rope against the nations. This is, this is the war of Gog and Magog. Now, there's many that say the war of Gog and Magog is not going to be a literal war. There's, there's proofs on both sides. There... Um, I've always kind of been in the middle because that's the way Torah works. There has to be an aspect of it that is not a big bloody war, but there has to be an aspect of it that there is a physical war. It, it has to be both. Torah is always both. You know, it's kind of like building the temple. Does Hashem build the temple? Yes. Does man have to build the temple? Yes. You know, there has to be stimulation from below. They have to start temple and maybe they just have to build the plans for the temple or, and, or, or put the CAD design up for the temple and then Hashem does it. But there always has to be both. It's can never, people, just, everybody does it, but you can't just pick one side. Maybe they just need to, man needs to clear off the temple mount and then God can build what he wants. Right, right, <laughs> right. There, there has to be, there, there always has to be both, you know. So he's going to use hode, which is, do I need to do some drawing? I don't think so. Why don't we, do, why don't we draw this out so people can see? All right. Tell me if y'all can see Russell Teresa. Can we see that? Am I got it lined up? Pretty good, sure. Pretty, Pretty good? good? Yeah. There you go. There. All right. We're gonna we're gonna need all this. We're gonna put the ot right here. This is gonna be Abba, and this is gonna be Ema. All right. This is wisdom. Wisdom. This is understanding. And this is knowledge. Knowledge. Okay. And then this is the ferret, which is za. All right, and this is the guru rope. All right, and this is the hesed, loving kindness. This is love. And this is den or judgment, power. 
All right, and this is Hode. This is the one he's talking about right here. This is Hode. Hode. This is where her feet descend to death. This is the left side. When it fell at the Garden of Adam, it, at, at, Garden of Adam. <laughs> that's a pretty true statement. Garden of Eden. It fell left. So this is the lowest one that's in the Klippa. All right, and then you have Yesod, and then you have Netzach, and then you have the Malkut. Now, this is the lowest side on the left. Be now, because it's the lowest side, but ho Hode means glory or splendor, right? So because it's the left side, what's he, what's he going to use to fight the left side with? His left hand, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So um, it's going, what we're going to see is, is this is, uh, Echia, I will be what I will be. Or, as Cecil B. DeMille says, I am that I am, right? Now, the problem is, Echia always defaults to Bina. So, Bina is always the default of Echia. Why? Because it goes to Abba, and Abba goes to Ema, and Ema is the thing that sends it into the lower levels. So, therefore, Echia's always going to be over here. What that means is, if, if I need to be, if I need to be the savior, I'll be the savior. If I need to be the destroyer, I'll be the destroyer. I'll be whatever I need to be. Okay? But if it's on the left side, it's going to come down here and it's going to wake up Zah, which is known as Hashem Siva Ot, which is in verse 3 here. Okay? And then it's going to come over here to Guvarot. And then Guvarot, it's going to spread out to all the Midot Right? It's going to spread out, but it's going to empower the sphere of Hod. And Hod is the thing that is going to destroy the Klippa of the nations. Right here. Does that still show up on my video? Yes. Okay? So, this is the mechanics of, this is the visualization of what I'm fixing to read. Okay? It's going to come through here, boom, and then go boom, boom, boom. And then the nations, the 70 nations, are going to be wiped out. The, the evil and the wicked of the 70 nations. But it, all the animals, and the, I mean, it's going, to be, it's going to be rough times. You think there's rough times coming up with what we see in the news now? It's the tip of the iceberg. Now, It says, Rabbi says, that, that he is going to allow Israel to gain this power, this koach, from Hod, from the left side, to fight against the Guvarot of the nations. And draws down to them, to them this power, which is the secret of Hod, splendor, glory, majesty, precisely. As it is the place that they were sorried, rejected, and grieved from through their exile and through their poverty as is written in Daniel 10, verse 8. So turn with me to page 1830, 1803, 3, not 30. 1803, Daniel 10, 8. The word here, robustness, bigger beauty, is hoed. If you will look at the very bottom line on the, on the page, can they see that, Teresa? Yes. It says, vahodi, vahodi. The word hoed is right there, the third word in. Mm -hmm. See it? Yes. That's the word hoed. And Daniel says, so... I remained alone. I saw a great vision. No strength remained in me. My robustness, my vahodi, changed to cor power, corruption. And I could retain no strength. It was draining him. Right? 
because that's where it attacks. And behold, <clears throat> that in the time of their redemption, their geula, and in the time of their expansion, their god loot, they will prevail and overcome through it, mamash, literally, to fight against their enemies. Now, Ravali is saying there will be a fight. Because whatever the Holy One, blessed be he, smashes or strikes, he heals. You got to knock the klepa off the nations. Makes all the sense in the world. You can't tell them the truth. They won't take it. You're going to have to beat it out of them. And Hashem is going to allow the Jews to beat it out of them. Because they've been beaten for 6,000 years. Measure for measure. As the matter that it says in Deuteronomy 32, 39, turn with me to page 509. 509, Deuteronomy 32. Uh, 39, verse 39, second line. I put to death and I bring to life. I strike, I struck down and I will heal. He's going to smash it, and then he's going to heal it. And this is the matter that was written in verse 3. He will make them like a horse whose hoed glory is in war. That means that this war that will be marshaled and arrayed against the nations comes mamish literally that he will he will make Israel he will make them like a horse whose glory was in war in the secret that is said that they would receive all their god loot expansions they were going to receive all the lights from the secret of hod which is splendor majesty and glory precisely as all the rest of the Medo traits spread out to this Medo trait. So what I showed you all ago, these six things are called the these six things are called the Medo, the traits. Alright? And they're all going to expand out and they're all going to feed Hode. All these lights are going to expand out and they're all going to feed Hode. Okay? This is called the Vak. This is Za. This is Adam. This is Ma. 45. And that's what's coming. Through Imabina. Which, which is Echia. I will be what I will be. I will, Echia, I share Echia. It's fiction to show up. Through the hold, splendor, majesty, precisely. As all the rest of the Medo traits spread out to this Medo trait to bring the success of Israel from the place itself that where it was taken down from. That they drew down all their sorrows and troubles from it, as is said. And this is the secret that they set in support. Verse 3. My anger is kindled against the shepherds and I will punish the he goats. For Hashem, master of legions, their Zah, has remembered his flock from the house of Judah. And he will make them like a horse whose glory is in war. Verse 4. From themselves the cornerstone. Now this cornerstone here is Pina. The word is Pina. Sounds like Bina, doesn't it? But it's mm -hmm. Pina. It's it's part of the, it's it's the Evenstia, but it's it's a different word, pina. From themselves a peg, from themselves 
a bow of war. Now, remember, we learned the bow and arrows was the Guvarod and, and the Hasidim, right? Mm -hmm. Before. So here it is. We've got a bow of war. From themselves, all the leaders will come forth together. Verse 4, Ravali says, That is to say, from Hod, as mentioned, from themselves will come the cornerstone, as it alludes to all the greatness and the rule and the reign, as said in Psalms 118.22. 1541 The stone that the builders despised has become the cornerstone the pina David was rejected by his own father and brothers when the prophet Samuel announced that the one that one of Jesse's sons was to be anointed king. Not one of them thought of summoning King David, David, who was with the sheep. Mm -hmm. First Samuel 16, 4 through 13. The one who rejected is going to be the one. This pina from themselves will come forth a peg to allude to to their establishment, like a tent peg. It's going to be peg, you know, driven in the ground, like a peg stuck in a faithful, trustworthy, loyal place. And certainly, all the more so that ima ila ah, Ima ila ah, Abba ima ila ah, ila supernal mother spreads out to hold, spreads out to hold like we're saying. Because if you take Akia and you write the three different ways to spell the expanded name, the Shem HaMeferesh of Akia, and you take the Milui of that. It adds up to 414, which is Yated, which is Peg. Adds up to Peg. This is going to drive it in the ground. And it's going to establish Israel. And ultimately wipe out the nations. That here, the setup or the establishment is to draw down to them from Bina as the matter that is said in Proverbs 3.19. Now, I'm going to keep this up here because I'm fixing to show you why I drew all this. So, go to Proverbs 3.19. It's page 1571. If you, didn't, if you don't think Solomon knew Kabbalah, Okay, Hashem, Abba Yah, we can call this Abba, right? This, this whole thing is Abba Yah, but this is Abba Yah. This can be aspect of Elohim, Abba Yah spelled with Elohim, and this is Adonai, and this is Siva Ot, all the different names. This is Shaddai. You can just pick one. It's, you know, when everything's got a name. Look what it says, Hashem founded the earth with wisdom. Abba founded the Nukwa, Nukva, earth, with wisdom. He established the heavens with understanding. Zah is the heavens, and it's established with, by understanding. Through his knowledge. Through his knowledge, just like we drew it. He is explaining this process that we just explained. We just label it for you on some circles on a whiteboard. Mm -hmm. 
as it says in verse 4, from themselves came form, came forth the bow of war to allude to the guberot that will be received from the Meda trait, literally, mamish, to fight against the nations. And those guberot, in as much as previously they were oppressors to Israel themselves and distressed them and attacked them and overpowered them with their dinning judgments of Israel. So they will be changed from here, from this place, and will be from leaders, from oppressors, to the leaders, front side, back side of the nations. In other words, the nations used to be the leaders and and the oppressors. Now Israel is going to get to be the leaders and the oppressors. It's all going to flip. To pay them retribution for what they did against Israel, that Hashem, may he be blessed, as he says in Zechariah, which we're in, 115. So turn to chapter 1 in Zechariah. 115. And y'all will remember this when I read it. I am wrathful and great wrath against the complacent nations who, when I became slightly wrathful, augmented the evil. They added evil upon evil to Israel. Mm -hmm. And this is the secret of verse 4. From themselves, the leaders and oppressors will come forth together of Israel against the leaders and the, the things that were the leaders and oppressors of the nations. And I'm going to get back to Zach here. As it says in verse 4, from themselves the cornerstone, from themselves the peg, from themselves the bow of war, from themselves all the leaders will come forth together. And at that time, Israel will show its power and strength in battle, as does the horse. See Job 39, 21. The horse rejoices his strength, and he goes out to face the weapons. Rabbach. And Malvin explains, these two verses are foretelling events pertaining to the Messianic times. God will take them to take to task the shepherds who misled his flock through their teraphim, divinations, and dreams. Instead of being like a meek lamb, Israel will then become like a brave horse who displays its strength in the war of Gog and Magog. The entire verse here in four is metaphorically described Israel's leaders until now. The cornerstone, the most unique stone of the structure, for it is only visible from two sides. One surface, two sides. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the symbolism of the, of the king, the most esteemed person of the nation. I'll turn, um, uh, let's see. It goes on with some more, some Rashi stuff, but I just wanted to, uh, the target. Yonasan translates um, oppressors and Robert explains that the scripture refers to the leaders as oppressors will become the leaders as oppressors become because they will oppress their enemies and lead Israel. And the Torah is amazing and the Sages are amazing. And I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.